Alright, here we go. We got increase some air pressure. Brian Shepard here, the captain of the Tornado Intercept Vehicle 2, Tip 2. I'm out driving around town right now doing some routine tests on the vehicle, keeping the fluids moving and uh, the lines cleaned out. While I'm out here, I thought I'd ask you guys how many of you have heard of the term supercell before? For a thunderstorm to be a supercell, it has to be persistent and it has to have a rotating updraft. So there are some telltale visual signs to help you identify a supercell that's distinctive from an actual thunderstorm. Not every supercell is a severe thunderstorm either, but what you can identify in a supercell is usually a tilted updraft. That means that the winds as you go up in height are stronger, and maybe even different directions. As those winds push over the updraft even harder as it goes up, it allows that downdraft to fall further away from the updraft, so it doesn't rain itself out. Usually you can see a nice round base to it. Uh, we call them a, a stack of plates or pancakes or upside down wedding cake. There's a lot of different terms for it. But that just shows that there's wind shear in the atmosphere. And that's usually a precursor to a tornadic thunderstorm. So why do we chase supercells? Well, for one, they're rare. Not very many thunderstorms actually become a supercell. And even when they do, they don't always produce tornadoes. The thrill of the hunt is to find that unique storm, and those are the supercells. 